Oh, there's under there. Oh, green. It's completely blown my mind. It's even better than I expected. Coming up on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, the Cougars are back from the Bay Area with a win and a loss from the weekend. Coach is here to break it down and preview the week ahead. Plus, social media sensation and team captain Elijah Bryant joins us here in Studio C, where BYU Basketball with Dave Rose starts now. Inside, eight scores for two seconds. It is all over. From 40 feet, he got it! He got it! Some of the other losses, it's been good to come back and try to get another winning streak put together. I mean, that's what we need to do. Down to a five second shot clock. TJ floats it to Yoli Childs. A steal on the other end by Elijah Bryant, and Eli is breaking away. Throws it down, a two hand hitter! This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. Presented by Siegfried and Jensen, live from Studio C in Provo, Utah, with your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Well, good evening. Once again, Cougar Nation, we welcome you back inside the sparkling BYU Broadcasting Building here in Provo, Utah, for our weekly hour of Cougar Hoops conversation. We do our show in front of a live audience every week here in Studio C. It's easy to join us. Just request your free seats at BYUcougars.com slash Rose Show. And Cougar fans can get a voice on our show by submitting questions for Coach Rose and our weekly guest tonight. It's Elijah Bryant. To send your questions in, use the hashtag Rose Show. Head Coach Dave Rose with us. And, uh, of course, we're talking hoops, but... Uh, Last night was a pretty big football game. I know you love the sport of college football. You wanted Oklahoma Clemson. We got Alabama Georgia, <laughs> but we got a classic game. Yeah, it was uh, it, it was a great game, and it was you know it was interesting because I didn't really care who won when the game started, but by the end I was actually kind of cheering for Alabama. You know, especially after that kid missed the kick. I mean, my goodness <laughs> gracious, you have to live with that your whole life. But uh, what a game! My goodness, what a I mean, there were so many. Uh, pieces to that thing uh, that freshman quarterback for for Georgia was so good early in the game and and then uh you know they make the change at halftime Alabama makes the change and like I mean basically his first college experience is in the national champion you know ship uh football game and he played the half of his life you know and they, they won a big game and you, you always get to those championship games and you 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 feel really good for the team that won and then you can't Help but think about what's going through the other on the other side because those guys, they, the the group leaves, the seniors go on, and the other guys come back. But um, you know, you never know if you get that chance again. Yeah. You know, I've been through that personally <laughs> as a player, and and uh, you're you, you know, for me, my experience, I appreciated the opportunity and the chance to play for the national championship. But you know, 36 years later, I still wish we would have won. You know, that would have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I found nice. myself. Pretty into it as well. I didn't really care who got it, you know, who won when the game began. But then I found myself also rooting. Hope Elijah doesn't care. Rooting for Alabama. He's a Georgia guy, uh, in part because uh, I think what Nick Saban's doing is pretty incredible. I mean, six national championships in, in a different era, maybe than maybe Bear Bryant had had to deal with as a coach. Looking at a coach, seeing what he's done over the last X number of seasons. It, it's just amazing. I, you know, it is really hard as a coach to take over a program that's kind of struggling and get it going and try to turn it around. That, that's a real tough, unique challenge. But another really tough, unique challenge is to manage success. And when you have, uh, you know, team year after year after year that you're trying to motivate and, you know, keep hungry and keep, uh, you know, that, that edge to you that you can, you know, continue to compete at such a high level, it's pretty impressive. Ever been in the same room with him? No. Nick Saban? I never met Nick. It might be an experience for any kind of coach. Yeah, you'd probably be pretty nervous. I think everybody around him is nervous, you know. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, last night it was interesting. You know, he's won a lot of football games at pro level, NFL, you know, uh, college. 
And last night he said it's the happiest he's ever been. That's what he ever. said. Ever. Yeah, ever. So his family's like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Is there something we did? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. yeah it, was, it was great. Well, I guess we'll get to basketball at some point. Uh, you, get, you get back, you had a, you had a road, road weekend uh, last weekend. And it was your first chance to really get on a plane with the guys in a lot of weeks. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought that, you know, the, the, the trip was uh, got off to a great start. And um, the earthquake the night before was... <laughs> Pretty interesting, you know, and at breakfast, all our guys talked about it. Some of them slept right through it, but others of them really felt it. And then, you know, their phones all start blowing up at 2.30 in the morning, which didn't really make me that comfortable. You know, <laughs> I think that my guys are all dealing with, uh, you know, different people in, at that time in the morning. But uh, uh, we made it through the earthquake, and then we got to practice that day and shoot around. And um, and then the, the game was, was pretty well executed by our team. I, I thought that we... We had a good game plan, a lot of uh, back and forth. We made some runs with them. They made runs back at us. And then when it was time to win the game, our guys did a great job of, of winning the game. So. Let's, take, let's take a look at it. Here's uh, BYU at San Francisco uh, last Thursday night. And uh, we got off to a great start. Here's the, uh, Shear just, you know, making something out of nothing, just penetrating through and, and then finding the open guy in Luke and, and finishing. And, you know, the, the key was to try to limit their three-point shots. And, um, you know, there, there's highlights here of them making a bunch of threes. and uh, But for the most part, they shot 42 threes the game before and only 20-some-odd against us. There's great ball movement. Elijah kicks it, and TJ's in the corner and finishes a, a three there with a great pass from McKay. And uh, then here's another quick three, you know, by Ferrari. Uh, and it's just that that difference is just really quick as far as being able to, you know, challenge that thing and get it shut off. There's McCarthy in the post against Joe, and Joe had some foul issues, and uh, they they really kind of uh, went down low and um, and scored the ball. But here's Shear late in the um, first half. Finished the half well. Coming off a, a high ball screen and and getting the ball up on the on the backboard and you know, getting it in and. Uh, and then we, you know, we really, I thought that we, this is great execution. We get the ball in the post, they sit from the weak side, Luke knows exactly where to go, hits McKay in the corner, and we hit a big three. What a, that was a, a really big shot for us. I think the game was tied at the time. And here's a shot for, the, I think, their first lead of yep. the game. Now you're playing from behind, yeah. And now we're eight minutes into the game, and, you know, what are we going to do? And, and our guys really responded well. We get a nice pass from Zach to Eli, and he hits a big shot for us. And, uh, you know, we go back up ahead, and then big pass here into Yo, and Yo finishes right at the rim. Uh, it was really kind of a clinic for us as far as execution, how we got the ball in the right place, and the guys were patient with it. And you know, Yo makes a nice move here. Again, that, that kind of seals the deal for us, puts us up six or seven with a minute and a half or so left in the game. So that was a great way to. Uh, start a game and a great way, great way to finish the game, um, and then it was pretty exciting in between. And and then you know the next night we started the game well and we didn't finish the game very well and it uh, it cost us. So uh, it was you know uh, I, I'm still trying to figure out with this group because the times that we've struggled the most have been um, you know the, the second night of the tournament back east against UMass. We didn't play very well, but we were able to finish that game and win it at the end. Uh, the second night at uh, um, last weekend, you know, on a Saturday night against St. Mary's, uh, played played a really competitive game, but we weren't able to execute down the stretch and win the game. And, and then a, 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 another Saturday night, you know, uh, after a Thursday win. And so I'm, I'm trying to maybe figure out if it's, some fatigue or if it's just, you know, physical fatigue, maybe mental fatigue, but those are the games where our execution at the end of the game was not as good as maybe some other nights that we played. That was your, I think, seventh straight win at San Francisco since you joined the league. You've tended to play pretty well up there, uh, and you've beaten them, I think, ten times in a row now overall. Yeah, and, and, and if, if we execute that way down the stretch, we're probably going to win most of our games. I mean, we were really good. I think we went on a... 16 to 4 to end. Yeah. And, yeah. and then one time it was 12 to 1 or 13 to 1 after it was after they got ahead. So uh, that's a great way to respond at the great at a great time during the game to re make that that response and uh, um, I think our guys are really built to win these kind of games. I mean our half court offense has really improved over the year. I think we're in the 
you know, top 20 percentile of our, of our effectiveness, you know, uh, in the half court sets. Um, and we just need to add some things, I think, to our game to, to, to maybe make us a little bit better offensively. Okay, let's get to that second game. You guys drove inland to Stockton to play Pacific on a Saturday night after the USF win, BYU and Pacific. And uh, very early in this one, uh, Pacific showed that uh, the talent that uh, Coach Stoudemire has brought in the new guys got some game to them. Yeah, and, and I, I think that, you know, the, the start for us, we shot the ball really well, but we, we didn't guard very well. And that's kind of our... What's been good for us is, is our defense. And, you know, we're ahead six or seven points in the first time out, but, the, you know, the number's pretty high. Pacific's got 16 or 17 points at the time, and, and that's when you, you start to worry about if our team's actually going to compete in a manner that will help us win. And so uh, we get to the second half here. We're down seven. We get a great start to the, uh, to the second half, and we, we make that up immediately. And tie the game, but uh, this trip was really good. I mean, he had made one three in the season up to this weekend. He made three at St. Mary's and made a couple against us. And so that's a nice move by TJ. We get the ball right where we need to get it, you know, tie the game. We're down two here. We miss a couple free throws and still have a chance. You know, we, we uh, run a nice play here. He reads yeah. the, the guy goes under the screen. And so, they, you know, Eli hits that thing from uh, three to, uh, you know, I think it. it uh, You're down one late. You foul Williams. Two. He misses them both, and here right. you go with 15 seconds to, to win it. And we got no timeouts left, so we run it through, and uh, you know we're trying to get Sheer to the basket. He puts it up high, and Yo has a chance to get that rebound. And then Zach makes a nice play, and you know now, now you, uh, you, know, you take two, two league losses. Uh, in, in two possessions, you know, let her uh, lose a game, you know, where we had a shot at, in regulation to win it, and then we're about a tenth of a second late there to win that one. So we're pretty close, but we're not close enough to, to where we want to be right now. Well, that's the thing. You, you, you look at two league losses, but you're not that far away, right? You're two plays away in a way, you could say. Yeah, but, you know, and, and there's a lot of things during the game that we, we just you really need to evaluate. And, uh, you know, right now our depth is an issue. We're, we're trying hopefully get Dalt back here in maybe a week or two. That, I think that will really help us. Uh, but these guys are, I mean, they're together and they're competing and, and hopefully we can, uh, uh, you know, just get better each week as the season goes on. And, you know, as a part of getting better, you got to win games. Well, we're through two weekends and a couple of traditional teams at the top. Let's take a peek at our uh, WCC standings here through the first two weekends. Uh, Santa Clara's maybe the surprise team. They're off to a 3-1 start, but they've played. Uh, their wins have come against the teams that don't have a win uh, yet in league. But uh, there's St. Mary's and Gonzaga traditionally at the top, and San Diego looks to be for real. Uh, and you'll see them here in a week or so. Yeah, it's it's really competitive league. I mean, they they, they scout really well, and you, you've got to be able to um, to do things that you do really well. But then you have to. Uh, be able to kind of react and re respond during the game to to find other things uh, that, that you can you know create during that time as far as adjustments that you make on the defensive end and on the offensive end and uh, I think our guys are ready for the league it's just a matter of uh, you know making a little uh, maybe a little bit more attention to detail for a play here or there and not just to play at the end of the game but mm -hmm. plays that we find you know in, in, in the Pacific game, it was really a, a, a lack of um, detail to, def to our defensive game plan that got us in trouble. It seemed like at shoot-around, it was really positive leading up to the Pacific game. It was game. good. The guys were ready to play. I mean, we got off to a good start. And as the game went on, their physical presence, uh, and then I, I think that uh, their ability uh, to, to get to the rim and score the ball just kind of turned them on. And... That was one thing we've been pretty good at is keeping guys away from the rim, keeping them off the foul line, and guarding their three-point shots. And then, you know, that night wasn't, we weren't good enough. All right, that's our week recap and our first segment of the show. We're taking our first break as we do. It's a reminder that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet, dinner Monday through Wednesday, a kitchen, and a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the Residence Inn Marriott in Provo. When we come back here to Studio C, Coach Rose looking ahead with the waves in town and the Broncos on the road as BYU basketball with Dave Rose continues here in Studio C. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. 
What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at Siegfried and Jensen.com. This isn't a settlement, this is a cemetery. The red drone said we find people here. We've got no fresh water or food. Does it bother you? One of them is your brother. If the ancestor blesses us, we will show him the light. How much time does Fina have? I'd say her time is short. Watch Extinct on BYU TV. My first love is basketball. I want to play basketball as long as possible. I love the challenge. Watch BYU take on Pepperdine live this Thursday at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. We're all in with BYU TV Sports. She's honest and loving, caring, warm and happy. And, you know, you never really see her have a bad day, so win or lose Michael and I are unbreakable. <laughs> On a special episode of the Story Trek, After the Storm. There was nothing we could do. It was really frightening. In a city of six million people, Hurricane Harvey brought massive destruction. We got up to six feet, and it was a flowing current that was coming through. He just hits you. It's like we, we, lo we lost the battle. It will take years, but Houston is rebuilding. When people show up at your door that you don't even know to help you, I think that's when the emotion runs, rushes in. Join me from Texas tonight on The Story Trek. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose is presented in part by the BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. And by Smith's. Low prices, market fresh at Smith's. All right, uh, last segment, we looked at uh, last week's games. Now it's time to kind of scope out the week ahead for BYU. And two nights from tonight, the Cougars home to Pepperdine. Coach Marty Wilson bringing the waves in. You'll see him for the first time this year. And it's pretty uh, pretty similar to the challenge that we had the other night. They're, they're strong, big, athletic guys. They drive the ball really well to the basket. Uh, not a great three-point shooting team, but they make four or five a game. And, uh, you know, this, this is a team that their athleticism has really caused us problems over the years. And, um, you know, hopefully our guys can run back this game plan that we, we had the other night against Pacific and actually do a much better job at it. And, uh, and, and you know, we'll see. It's, it's, it'll, be, it'll be a little bit different. I mean, they've got a really good point guard, a freshman kid that might be the best you know, addition to our league as far as a freshman is concerned. He's, he's really playing well. And, and Colby Ross. Yeah, scoring yeah. the ball really well and a couple of junior college transfers. and A lot of transfers. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it's, it's very similar to uh, the Pacific game is where they kind of re, reloaded with a whole new group of guys and, um, and their style is pretty similar. Marty's had a really banged up team again this year. Injuries, illness, he hasn't really had his group uh, together too frequently this year. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I feel for Marty, but I feel for my own self. Yeah. I mean, I, we take <laughs> you got your own deals. We took uh, eight scholarship guys on the road last week, so uh, you know, we're all dealing with uh, uh, you know issues and, and and try to find a way to fight through it and and to be as consistent as you can possibly be. But depth really helps your consistency, and that, that's something that a lot of teams uh, right now are kind of you know dealing with. I just read a, a thing on Kansas. You know, Kansas is trying to you know win their 13th or 14th league championship and they're only playing seven or eight guys you know and, and and they're waiting for guys to get eligible and guys you know come off the injured list or whatever but uh, depth is a real issue in trying to sustain a seven eight nine week uh, conference league schedule you mentioned Dalton a little bit ago you said hopefully within a week or so you get him back on the floor or? well he's got to the point now where uh, he can actually start to do things and then then the whole process now will uh, be determined by how he responds the next day. He did a little elliptical work, shot a little bit today, then tomorrow we'll see how he feels. And as long as he stays pain free, then there's a process that you go through with these things. And, and hopefully, you know, we can get to the point where he's out actually in practice here sometime soon, and then we'll know if it's going to work or not. The, the thing that you really worry about in this situation is that, uh, you know, it lights up again and, and it starts, you know, the, be really painful yeah. and 
and then then you don't you know know if it, if it's going to be able to heal in time as far as you know the season is concerned. So. Well, Thursday will be your 18th game. You've only had Dalton for nine games yeah. this year. All right, so it's another season without travel partners, true travel partners in the WCC. So it's a it's a, a home road split. You play Pepperdine at home Thursday, then you're right on the road Friday back to the Bay Area. Yeah, we got a few of these uh, split weekends that are you know hard to manage with travel, but uh, just look forward to. <laughs> You know this Thursday night game, but you know these guys really, really hurt us last year over there with from the three-point line, and uh, a lot of those guys are still back, and so uh, we'll address that. That's actually been a good game plan for us this year, is is trying to to limit some of these uh, teams that really fire up the three. We've done a pretty good job keeping that percentage down, keeping the attempts down, and we'll really have to do it on that night because that's what they're really good at. That's our weekend setup. It's Pepperdine and Santa Clara. Well, tonight's player guest, Dave, is, is Elijah Bryant, someone you've known about for a long, long time, but someone you're only really seeing maybe come into his own fully as a Cougar this year. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for Elijah and for his game, not just because he's really helping our team, but he's such a, a competitive kid that that is so dedicated to this game. I mean, this game means so much to him. And, and we brought him here, and he had a great year, you know, his first year here when he was – uh, just practicing with us and then you know he got hurt and and then from there you just kind of wonder if he's ever going to be the same if you're going to get him back and and uh, he's been through a heck of a process and I think he'll probably talk about you know, the appreciation that he has for this game now as a part of that uh, um, you know that, that injury that he went through but uh, you know the, the funny thing is you get, you, you get a guy here and you start telling everybody how good you think he is <laughs> and then he gets hurt and you know he doesn't really have the the spark that maybe everybody you know could see that the coach can see, but yeah. I think people know now that uh, this is a kid that's got a, got great potential, and right now he's playing, you know, really well. But he has such um, you know, more upside to his game that I think we can uh, continue to improve on. That's really encouraging, because he's, he's been tremendous. Uh, Eli's coming up next. All right, uh, time for a word from our sponsor, Utah Community Credit Union, helping people make smart decisions every day at UCCU. You can get a low fixed rate on a home equity line of credit and lock in that low rate for 10 years with absolutely no closing fees. To learn more, visit uccu.com. After the break, Elijah Bryant joining us here on court as BYU basketball with Dave Rose continues. Life's difficult moments are deepened when we find ourselves alone. There are times when we need each other. Only by giving of ourselves do we truly find happiness? This is the reason we have relationships. We do for others what they can't do for themselves. We revere life and we revere health. Let's live better. And a story that really resonates with me. It's all about facing adversity and battling against the odds. A story where one person's kindness could change someone else's life. We take a remarkable man on a trip down memory lane. Will it spark powerful emotions? Can he change the life of a caring and inspirational teenager? Yes. This is Going Back, Giving Back. Like eight years ago, man, it, it felt like a ghost town. People were leaving. They were leaving town. They weren't coming back. There was no reason to move to Hamilton. There's no industry here. If we wanted to raise our kids here, like stay here, something had to change in order to create a reason to stick around. I could not believe what quilting and what this company had meant to all these people. Envy. Watch BYU Sports Nation on BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. I didn't think that would go public. It's a beautiful morning. Kindness. Thank you. Pass it on. Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. With your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. 
We are back inside Studio C for more BYU basketball with Dave Rose. We're on air every Tuesday evening on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Be sure to use the hashtag Rose Show for a chance to see your questions asked during our Q&A segments later on in the program. Well, with head coach Dave Rose, I'm Greg Grubel, and time now to introduce this week's special guest from Gwinnett, Georgia, one of BYU's two team captains this season and one half of the EB&J YouTube channel. He is EB number three, Elijah Bryant. So, despite what you might have heard, uh, Coach Rose and I and everybody else in here, we were all pulling for Georgia last night. Man. So, uh, really, really bummed that things turned out the way they did. Yeah, me too. I mean, I mean, have a lot of friends on the team, and um, Alabama made a smart decision to pull the quarterback and put a new one in. And shout out to that guy for making a big play. It was something. You, you, right before the game, you were tweeting "Go Dogs." So we yeah. know where your allegiances lie. Yeah. Uh, give us the background between you and the state of Georgia. Was that a born and raised situation for you? Yeah, so I grew up in Oconee, Georgia, which is like 20 minutes from Athens. And um, actually, Dennis Felton, the coach at the time of the Bulldogs, lived in my neighborhood. So I was like super big Bulldogs fan. And then my uncles and aunts and everyone in my family was super into Georgia Bulldog games. We would go to the game. So that one last night kind of stung a little bit. So, so this Go Dogs for me was really heartfelt. Yeah, it was felt. But I tried to play. I was with the guys last night. I tried to play it off. Like, Eli, you mad? I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. Like, this is all good. <laughs> so it's a good first half. Yeah, yeah. And it was just a great game when it came right down to it. It was a great game. Unbelievable game. Uh, Coach Rose, when did you first uh, become aware of, of Elijah? Well, I met Eli at a, at a camp, at a, one of our uh, you know basketball camps here in the summer. And uh, you know, we're really, you know, excited to, to show him around and have him here and uh, kind of as the recruiting process went through, the, the numbers just didn't kind of add up for us. And, uh, and then he, uh, he, he went on and uh, played uh, his senior year in high school and then he went to a prep school and, and at that prep school he started really playing well and, you know, we, we, we tried to squeeze things with our scholarships and our, but it just didn't work out so we went on and and uh, you know, played at Elon, and then after he realized he was going to leave Elon, we jumped back in, and really, you know, things had changed here. We had a lot of things that had kind of flipped uh, with missions and things, and and so we we gave it a second try and got really, really nervous. But I, I was really excited the night he called me, the afternoon he called me, and said he was going to come to BYU. When was BYU really first on your personal radar? Uh, when I came out here and saw the mountains, I I, won, <laughs> I think I came on an unofficial my junior year, and I was like, dang, it'd be so fun to come here. But then I was still in the process of growing, and I was probably like six foot then, and I, I was still playing well, but it was just like I wasn't ready for BYU basketball. So then the whole process, actually, when I committed to Elon, um, it, like he said, the scholarship situation, they were waiting for some guys to transfer, leave. I got, as soon as I hung up the phone with my coach, the notif notification from ESPN came in and said, transferring <laughs> from BYU. So I was like, dang, maybe it's not meant to be. I don't know. <laughs> so then ended up here, and I love it here. It's, uh, it, it's an interesting thing that uh, you, you talk about the growth spurt. I was watching some of your high school video, highlight videos just the other day, mm -hmm. and it's quite a pretty remarkable change. You go back enough years, and all of a sudden, that's not the same guy. Yeah. He's wearing number three, but that looks like a much shorter, mm -hmm. different kind of player. Yeah. Uh, how much did you really grow? Because it, it, it was a really different kind of looking uh, so look for you. Five, seven in ninth grade, and then by junior year, I think I was like six foot. And the thing is, my mom, like the doctors always said, oh, we know you're going to be six five, but being a kid playing basketball, I'm like, I need to be 6'5 now. Like, I, <laughs> I need it now. Like, and that's, that's how I was feeling. But the thing is, I noticed uh, throughout that whole process, I slept all the time. I would eat, sleep, eat, sleep. I was just sleeping all the time. So I was like, maybe I am growing, maybe I'm not. And then finally, you know, starting to fill into my body and then look where I am now. Dave, when did you find out that his middle name was Brigham? And when that happened, was it like a done deal for you at well, that point? Uh, yeah. When, when, <laughs> in fact, I told him that. I said, hey, you can't go anywhere else. I mean, <laughs> this is like in the cards here. But, uh, you know, the, I, I think that of all the guys I've ever coached, Eli is one of the guys who, who, who knows everything that, you know, his day is put together and what he eats and how he eats. If you're, if you're part of his his video and vlog and, you know, those things, you'll see that that's a big part of his life. And, uh, you know, my daughter, my youngest daughter, Taylor, you know, she's played volleyball. She was 5'7", in his ninth grade, and she was a setter, and we're all tall in our family, and she thought she was going to be 5'11", maybe 6'0", like her older sister, 
She stayed at five seven, <laughs> <laughs> and I hear about it all the time. You know that, uh, but I'm, I'm glad that you got the the extra sp yeah. spurt, yeah. and uh, it's working for you. But what I'm really proud of is just how hard he works, and and then now things good things are happening after a pretty tough challenge for him. Yeah, well, I want to get the hard how hard you have worked after last year. Um, but the middle name Brigham is a legit thing, right? Yes. For Brigham Young. Yes. Okay. So like, in a way, it was in the cards then, right? Like yeah. you said, uh, last year. Um, you weren't really yourself, I guess we could say, right? Yeah. Uh, was there at a point, any point last year where you where you felt like you were kind of back to normal? Did it really never get there for you? Um, last year was a tough year for me. That was my first time ever really being injured. And I think it was more mental than physical for me because getting back from an injury, you still don't trust yourself. And even sometimes this year, I'm still having that mental. So I think being able to meet with Craig, the sports psychologist all the time, really helps me to hone in because all basketball is is confidence. Shooting is confidence. So I think... When you lose that because of a physical attribute, it's kind of hard getting that mental side back. So I think last year, um, I matured a lot. Um, I had to learn a lot of things, and um, it's helped me a lot this year. You look at some of your stats, and we see just how much of a jump you've taken in pretty much every meaningful category. Beyond the, the, the medical part of it, how much was, was the physical grind for you to get back to where you are right now or close to where you are now? Yeah, I, n I never really um, got a break within like physical therapy. So I went home um, to Atlanta. And I was doing physical therapy four days a week. I'd drive down to Atlanta, it was like 40 minutes. And um, when I go home, it's no days off either. My mom's not let me slip or slide <laughs> or anything. So I'll go home before I can do anything. It's hit rehab and then get shots up. So. It was a grind, and for a while there, there was no progress. And then, as you know, I had the little setback, and then it was just like, all right, not to start over. So I think the biggest thing is that my motto um, is just like tough times don't last, tough people do. So I think um, looking at that kind of gives you that bigger spectrum of everything. And this season so far so good, right? Yeah. Awesome. Well, time now to get to know Eli even a little better through the eyes of his teammates. It's our weekly video vignette featuring his fellow Cougars and coaches. Let's take a look. Eli is, Eli is just good at everything. He's probably one of the more unique on the team. I think someone would be surprised to know that Eli is a really, really good dancer. Probably the second best dancer on the team, next to me. I've always wanted to know if he's ever like cut the top in the back of his hair. Cause it's looking pretty nappy right now, but we'll see. Eli's gonna thank me for this one, but he's a, he's a blogger um, and constantly vlogs his life. If you check out his vlog, you'll see pretty much everything. He has his blogs. Elijah and his wife Janelle have a vlog. I think he has a blog or something like that. I, I guess he like gets a little goofy. He's always doing those things, so everyone knows his life. Uh, he can sing. You guys should have him sing on the show. He's super good at singing. He's very composed, knows exactly what his game is, what his strengths are. I hate guarding him personally because he's always doing something. He's never taking a break. He's always rebounding. He's always uh, trying to steal from you. He's always scoring. It's, it's impossible. What a lot of people really don't see is all the stuff that he does off the court. You know, he, he really makes sure he takes care of his body. He's a health freak, so if he ever sees you eating like dessert or anything like that, he's going to get on you. He just does whatever it takes to prepare to, to be successful. He's just kind of a ball of life guy. He's shy, but you know, when you put a camera in front of him, you know, he's a whole different persona. Just an all-around good guy. All right. And, and there is a camera in front of you pretty often in your life these days, yeah. we find out, right? Yeah. They all mention the vlogs. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll get into a little more next segment, but that's, that's a big part of your life, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the vlog, you want to talk about the vlog? So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the biggest thing with the vlog, um, where it started with one of our friends, um, Dan from What's Inside, and I just kind of wanted to make memories. I love taking photos, and um, I want my kids to be able to see me play at BYU, but they won't really be able to uh -huh. see me play at BYU. So it, it's just fun to look back and, I don't know, have these memories. Sometimes it gets a little awkward. You know, you're holding a camera, and people are like, what is he doing? <laughs> but looking back, it's all worth it. I mean, these are funny to look at, to me, at least. I hope so. <laughs> so. And uh, I talked to you on the weekend and talked about your subscriber number. It's a good number. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's what, 13,000 plus right now? Yeah, 13,000 plus. But your goals are higher than that, right? Yeah, I'm trying to get to 100,000 by the end of the year. So just keep on progressing and, yeah. Okay, and uh, for people to find it, it's pretty easy. If you just put in EB and then the and, and sign, EB and J, J yeah. uh, YouTube, it'll come up it'll and there's your own up. channel, right? Yeah. So go and subscribe. <laughs> You're bound to get a couple more just, trying, just on that. Yeah. Dave, have you ever, you, do you, are you kind of up, well, up to speed on with him? Or I'll tell you this, okay, I've been coaching for 35 years, <laughs> and I've had a lot of kids that have got married and gone on a honeymoon, but I actually know what 
the majority of his honeymoon. I watched it on the blog. I kept, I kept getting nervous, hoping they'd shut the camera off <laughs> at times. And they, they did a That's nice funny. job of it, but uh, yeah. I just kind of imagine what, but he's on the, they're on a cruise and he's, he's working out on the, on the uh, ship, on the ship, Hardwood, you know, yeah, the court, yeah, and, yeah. And, and she's not really sure what she married, you know, <laughs> you say, I think this is what we're supposed to do, you know, is work out every yeah. day, but, uh, you know, that, that part of it is actually, uh, you know, pr pretty uh, interesting to me to watch guys on social media and what they're doing and, and being able to talk about it. And so, as you know, I've finally jumped in and I'm on Instagram and I have a chance to see a lot of what they do. And uh, that was one of my first real experiences. <laughs> my wife says, look at this honeymoon thing. <laughs> well, you're sure I want to see this. Yeah, okay. yeah. Maybe I ought to jump in. It's all good. All right. That's awesome. So it's EB and J, EB and on, J. on YouTube. All right. Uh, we're taking a break. Cougar fans, remember, basketball season is blanket season. That means Minky Couture. Learn more at softminkyblankets.com. We've got more with Elijah Bragg coming up, including some questions from our audience. Stay with us on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. When the Sports Nation guys do a show at Deseret First Credit Union, you never know which BYU Sports VIP might show up. That's the Cosmobile. The Cosmobile's rolling up, baby. Woo! Cosmo's here! Hey, maybe Cosmo needs a student checking account or a soda inside. This has already been the best in a minute ever. 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 Go bump that music, Cosmo. Deseret First Credit Union. Proud to support BYU Sports Nation on BYU Radio and BYU TV. On the basic level, we offer transportation. We carry four wheels, tailgates, and a place to rest your rump. Beyond that, we provide adventures, opportunities, and jobs well done. So perhaps our favorite offering is our full line of trucks, including the new Nissan Titan. Right off I-15, Tim Daly Nissan Southtown and the popular full-size Nissan Titan. Think Nissan. Think Tim Daly. We could be about to see something genuinely remarkable. Yes, let's go. People who really, truly care about others can do phenomenal things. This is like legitimately uplifting. I'm not gonna give up. I have to do this. I think tonight was the start of something really special. Your story, what would you say it is? Oh, wow. <laughs> There's one right there. Oh, green! <laughs> It's completely blown my mind. It's even better than I expected. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose is presented by Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 25 years. All right, here's an update on our Cougars in the pros. Jimmer Fredette, another 50 today in China. Eric Mika playing out there in Italy. Brandon Davies in Lithuania. The Lithuanian junior team that he plays with played the Ball Brothers today. You might have seen that. Tyler Hawes signed to play and played a game tonight in Canada. Plays for the St. John's Edge in Newfoundland with former Cougar Rashawn Brodus. They both played tonight in the game that just got finished. And Kyle Collinsworth still hanging with the uh, Dallas Mavericks. All right. You're back on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. And, uh, uh, Elijah Bryant's our player guest here in the uh, in the second segment, and Eli, you guys are great at bouncing back as a team under Dave Rose, generally speaking. And you guys had that opportunity after the St. Mary's loss, did so well, and then you've got another opportunity here tomorrow night or two nights from now against Pepperdine uh, to bounce back and uh, get back on the winning track. Why are you guys so resilient? What's been the secret that way? I think just getting back to what we do and um, sticking to our concepts. I think a lot of times guys might get rattled after a loss, but we've done this for so long since the summer and nothing's really like changed from our core values of what we do. So I think having those core values that have been instilled with you from like 6 a.m. in the summer that you've just been pounded all summer has helped us when these challenges come up. Coach Rose, it's so infrequent that you have a back-to-back -back loss situation. That's been well, one of the hallmarks of your team. Yeah, I think the, the group of guys that they, they get reminded you know of what's you know what, what we're really good at and and what we need to do uh, you know sometimes 
uh, you know, shots just don't go in, and sometimes you know you you have you know matchup problems that are that are difficult for you in certain games. But uh, these guys get they get really dialed in, and you know the next time out, and um, want to change that. They're, they're all really you know great competitors. We've had unbelievable competitors here in our program over the years, and I think the expectation is to get right back in there. And and uh, one of the things that's important is. We're all going to get knocked down in life, but what's really important is if you're going to get back up and how you get back up and when you get back up, and hopefully it's the next time out. Hopefully it's Thursday night. Let's uh, get in some live Q&A for Elijah. We'll have a studio question from Bart Dangerfield. Hello, Bart. Hey, how's it going? Good. Biggest question I know everyone wants to know, especially me, how do you do the hair thing? Is there any hope for me, <laughs> and how do you keep it going on the court? Any special pregame warm-up routines that you do for the hair? See, this thing right here, this takes a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> no, so I just take a shower, shampoo, conditioner, and then put some deep condition in it, but it's getting a little long, so I might have to trim it in the front, you know, so take some court vision away, so I don't need those, <laughs> I don't need those turnovers on my hands. Our coach is going to be mad about that, so... <laughs> But yeah, that's how I do my hair. Bart, thank you. Yeah, you and I both have real issues with, uh, with our hairstyles. All right, uh, we've arrived at the portion of the show that our weekly guests either loathe or love, uh, depending on how they do, I guess. It's our weekly 10 questions a pop quiz. Oh, it's skinny mic time. There we go. All right, along with the music, and here we go. Uh, first of all, the leaderboard. Uh, a three-way tie for first right now yeah. with Peyton, Yo, and uh, Jashir all at nine for 10. We'll see if you can join them at the top or maybe bump them off by going perfect for the first time. Here we go. Question number one. What was the final score of last night's college football national championship game? 26 to 23. Yes, there you go. I might have got some help. <laughs> that was good. That's that. <laughs> yep, Georgia field goal and Alabama, Alabama touchdown without a convert. There you go. Uh, one for one. Question two. Your single game career scoring high came last season in Portland. How many points did you score that night? 39. Two for two. You had a breakaway dunk at Pacific on Saturday. Counting regular season games only, what is your official career BYU dunk total? Only regular season games, only BYU. One. Yes, that was the one on Saturday. We finally got it. I was excited about that. All right, uh, number four. We haven't had good luck with our actor questions, Dave. This has not uh -oh. been very good. Uh, this actor portrays the hobbit Frodo Baggins in the Lord of the Rings series. Yeah, I, I don't watch too many movies. <laughs> <laughs> Elijah Wood. Oh, Elijah I Wood is his name. That. So, yeah, that was, that, that was our reason for asking. He okay. Have, he might have hair like you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's hobbit hair. Uh, question five Which of your teammates has a listed hometown of Mesa, Arizona? Peyton Dastrup. There you go, four or five. Question six, your 42 three-point field goals lead BYU this season. Way to go for that, by the way. Uh, who holds the BYU record for most three-pointers in a single season? Jimmer. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> 124. <laughs> BYU plays at Santa Clara this weekend. Which former Santa Clara point guard went on to become a two-time NBA MVP? Steve Nash. There you go, six for seven. You and Yoli Childs have each scored exactly the same number of points this season, 297. But you don't have the same number of Twitter followers. Who has more, you or Yo? Me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that one. About 2,800, about 2,500. Way to go. Uh, so you're, you're a seven for eight. Question nine. In high school, prep school, and at BYU, you have worn the number three jersey. Why? Why that number? Um, I've worn it since I was little, so I've always stuck with it. Yeah, oh, just like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, to go nine for ten and join the top of the leaderboard. Who cuts and styles your hair when you are living in Provo? Una's Barbershop. <laughs> Is that right? Did we ding him? Hope we ding him. All right, good job. Here we go. Nine that's, for ten. That's, that's nine for ten. That's uh, that's four at the top of the leaderboard. By the way, some people there's uh, say that you bear a, a slight uh, similarity to a Canadian musician by the name of, of The weekend. Yeah. So are you buying that at all? Yeah, I've heard it multiple times. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going with it now. You're okay with it, <laughs> I'm right? I'm with it. You, you don't get angry, upset no, about no. it. All right, so there it is. That's uh, Elijah Bryant, folks. How about that? Nine for 10, and it's a four-way tie at the top now. How about a hand for Elijah on uh, 10 questions? Thanks for coming on. Thanks. Good luck on Thursday night. We'll come back with more BYU basketball with Dave Rose. Q&A for the coaches coming up. Stick around with us here in Studio C.
Hi, I'm Dave McCann with BYU TV Sports. Each season, we invite companies like yours to be a part of the BYU brand, aligning your business with respected academics and athletics. Becoming a corporate partner means you'll benefit from showcasing your products and services with game day signage, social media, radio, and TV campaigns. Whether on the field, in the stands, or on the air, BYU's here to help your brand grow. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. If you have symptoms such as depression, fatigue, headaches, or an inability to concentrate, you may have low thyroid caused by Hashimoto's disease. We're trained in blood chemistry. We really understand how to look for imbalances in the simple blood test. And once we can identify what those are, then we can customize a course of treatment. Our biggest goal is that we can really teach and educate these patients. Red River Health and Wellness can help with the treatment plan remotely or at any one of our locations. Social media, hashtags, internet, what? These are some super confusing things, but all you need to know is that Studio C is on YouTube and we are always releasing new videos. Subscribe to see all the cool stuff we're gonna be doing next. Find Studio C on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Connect with us, we'll connect with you. On a special episode of the Story Trek, After the Storm. There was nothing we could do. It was really frightening. In a city of six million people, Hurricane Harvey brought massive destruction. We got up to six feet, and it was a flowing current that was coming through. He just hits you. It's like we, we, lo we lost the battle. It will take years, but Houston is rebuilding. When people show up at your door that you don't even know to help you, I think that's when the emotion runs, rushes in. Join me from Texas tonight on The Story Trek. My first love is basketball. I want to play basketball as long as possible. I love the challenge. Watch BYU take on Pepperdine live this Thursday at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. We're all in with BYU TV Sports. You're watching BYU TV. See the good in the world. That was our Nissan exciting play of the game presented by Nissan, a proud partner of the BYU Cougars. Nissan innovation that excites as we are back on BYU basketball with Dave Rose here in Studio C. Uh, that play we saw came after you guys finally trailed uh, in the second half against USF and Eli put you in front and you would not trail again that yeah, night. We didn't, we didn't stay behind very long, which is a good thing. But, uh, you know, EJ comes out of that, uh, that ball screen and two guys come to him. And so he, you know, punches it to, to Zach who pops out of that. And then his guy kind of steps towards him, and so he kicks it to Eli in the corner, and, you know, great result, great execution. And when you make that basket, it makes everything look good. I saw his, we saw his numbers earlier and talked about the fact he has 42 threes. Um, that, that's a big number compared to where he was last year. He's such, such a good three-point shooter this season. Yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, the different combinations on the floor, um, you know, can really get us into situations where we have an advantage, especially from the three-point line. And, uh, Eli's, you know, shooting the ball really well, and McKay's had, uh, you know, nights where he's really shot it well. But that that is something that we really need to become more consistent at as, as a group. And um, these four or five guards spend a lot of time at it, and hopefully we'll see the the results of it here going down the stretch. Time for some Q and A for Coach Rose, and it's from Twitter hashtag Rose Show this week and every week from at Texan Parker. What was the most remarkable thing about playing on that legendary University of Houston team? The most remarkable thing, well, that's interesting. I've had a lot of questions about that team. Uh, probably the most remarkable thing is that uh, we won 26 straight games. I mean, uh, it, was, it was unbelievable. We lost at Syracuse. We played a, a December game at Syracuse uh, in the Carrier Dome, coached by Jim Beheim. if you can believe that. My goodness. He's still coaching. And I mean, you've coached against him. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and so uh, uh, we lost that game, and then we, we flew home and flew to Japan and played a tournament in Japan with Utah and, and University of Virginia. And uh, we lost one game over there, then came home and won 20 straight, straight, 26 straight games to the championship game. And uh, what a run it was. And, you know, uh, it, it just, it was almost, didn't matter what happened. We won a couple overtime games. We won a triple overtime game at TCU. We were just going to win. The guys just figured it out. And, and we thought that was going to happen in the championship <laughs> game, too. And we're up seven with four minutes left and uh, missed a bunch of free throws. And the rest is history. In fact, I saw it last night or this morning. 
they were showing it on ESPN because of that the great ending the to finish. the the football game last night, and they gave like some top ten championship game finishes, and ours was number one. <laughs> yeah. But. Or the other team. You, you, you said you, you got to go, you, you, yeah. you got to go through it. Yeah. Yeah. When did when did the streak become like the streak that year? Like when did it become a thing? Well, uh, right about halfway through conference play, it was the old Southwest Conference. Um, we had never, you know, uh, we, we beat Arkansas at home, and Arkansas was in the top four, top three. I think they were ranked two or three at the time, and we were still crawling, you know, up trying to chase them. But then we had to go back to Arkansas and play in Barnhill Arena, and Coach Lewis had never won a game in Bar Hill, Barnhill, and so we were, we'd won 20 some at that time, uh, and and that was a big game. Now, Benny Anders bailed that whole game out for us. He scored 18 points in the first half, and and then we still had to go to Baylor the next night, or two nights later against Terry Teagle, uh, and the Baylor crew to win the game to win the outright championship. So it was, uh, it was pretty. Um, pretty stressful deal, but uh, someday I'll go back and actually watch all that stuff and remember how uh, it is to go three months without losing. Yeah, the game. <laughs> but all the names and games come back pretty quickly. Hey, we got to take a quick break. Uh, more Q and A with Coach Rose coming up. This is BYU basketball with Dave Rose here in Studio C. Back in a second. Where's the cereal? Should be in there. I threw it out to make room for these. Mom, what? You have to eat more than just cereal. But this isn't even my apartment. How'd you get in? Listen, you can never escape a mother's love. And the answer is a crowbar. Is that my shirt? Yes, honey. I'm just going to borrow it for a few days. Get groceries without mom. BYU meal plans. I have strengths that I never thought I had. The experience I had as a player, it was a great honor for me to play for him and to be part of his family. This place is amazing, just extraordinary. A ship in the harbor is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. You're not a man on an island. You're no. in the midst of this artistic community. He could be the king of France for all I care. I will not marry him. A camera show called the Random Ass. We thought it was going to be like easy. It didn't turn out like that. This is crazy. BYU sports, baby. Drops it up. This is the play. <laughs> we are the human race, not them. We decide how we live, not them. Tell me I'm a superhero. Ooh, I'm going to give you some dosey dose. You have no idea. It's been a long time. It's been forever. And we thought this should be here with you, Gary. Uh, Go ahead and turn around. This is the coolest thing that has ever happened to me in my entire life. I'm Joe's father. It's all about love and it's all about coming together. It's all about lifting each other up. Yeah. Right there. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose is brought to you in part by Nissan, innovation that excites. All right, welcome back to BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Here's the broadcast schedule for this weekend. The Cougar Thursday, Cougars home to Pepperdine, 9 Eastern on BYU TV and the BYU Sports Network on radio with pregame on the radio beginning at 8 Eastern. Then Saturday, BYU at Santa Clara again on BYU TV and the BYU Sports Network on radio 10 Eastern with pregame with the radio at 9 Eastern. Back after this final segment of BYU Basketball with Dave Rose here in Studio C. And a story that really resonates with me. It's all about facing adversity and battling against the odds. A story where one person's kindness could change someone else's life. We take a remarkable man on a trip down memory lane. Will it spark powerful emotions? Can he change the life of a caring and inspirational teenager? This is going back, giving back. You may not know this, but Studio C has a YouTube channel. So you should go subscribe and see sketches, behind the scenes footage, and lots of other fun stuff that I'm pretty sure you're gonna wanna be a part of. Think about it. 
Find Studio C on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Connect with us, we'll connect with you. I believe it's really important to be well-rounded. Being here at BYU is the best decision I ever made. There's a time for everything. When it's time for basketball, locked in to play hoops. My first love is basketball. I want to play basketball as long as possible. I love the challenge. My first love is basketball. I want to play basketball as long as possible. I love the challenge. Watch BYU take on Pepperdine live this Thursday at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. We're all in with BYU TV Sports. Sports, not my thing. That's okay. You can watch Studio C. Um, how many of the field goals equate to uh, a basket? 7.2. I was not aware that there would be this much math in sports. Me neither. Is there yeah. a lot of running in baseball? Yeah. It's oh, like man. boxing. Spence and I feel like we're just the connection between BYU sports and the fans. It has meaning, right? BYU sports matters to people, so it's great to be a part of that. You're watching BYU TV. See the good in the world. All right, so back to our final segment, uh, BYU basketball with Dave Rose as we head into the week. We've got uh, Pepperdine and Santa Clara. We'll get coaches' thoughts on those games in a second. Uh, one last question from Twitter from at Marshall Chamb. I would think it's sharp for Marshall Chambers. Coach Rose, does Greg Grubel ever give you a hard time when you stand between him and the action when he's trying to call home games? It's a fun sideshow watching Greg bob his head back and forth behind you. The answer I can tell you right now is no, I don't bring it up. <laughs> and, and you never actually, like, shooed me away, you know? You, you haven't reached out there? I, no, I, I, no. I do feel your eyes sometimes yeah. on my back. Well, the coaching box got longer yeah, this but year, but they right? changed it. And so, I, and so you're out further, and so I'm doing a lot more yeah. of this than I used to, yeah. but I'll keep doing it. You stay yeah. doing what you're yeah. doing. I'm not yeah. going to touch you. No, I'm not messing with you know, Coach I, Rose. I, I actually used to, to crouch down a lot, but... My knees just kill me. You know, I, I got this one really bad knee, and like I'll crouch down and it'll hurt for a week. So I stand up a lot now. So. Now you keep doing you, and I'll I'll keep bobbing. That's all right. It's all right. Uh, where, where's the team on track as we go into the weekend? Really, like really on track, and where do you want to see maybe get a little bit better as we go forward? Well, I, I think that uh, you know defensively we we we've been really good at times, and consistency is an issue on that end. I, I think that our game plans are good. And our guys, our ability to execute that game plan is really good. Offensively, uh, I think we're kind of, we're, we're, we're really good in the half court. And I, I think we need to get better in, in a lot of areas. But uh, I'm, I'm waiting for us to kind of break out and, and get more guys shooting the ball well. And I think that inside, you know, we were getting really good scoring from inside. And I think our perimeter guys are kind of spotty. Eli's been a real consistent factor for us. But need to get uh, our ability to make, you know, you know, three or four more three-point shots a game, two or three out of bounds under, get to the free throw line, be a little more consistent, uh, and get us from those mid to high 60s into the, you know, mid to high 70s, I think will really make a big difference. One thing about this thing we're in is it's, it's a long road. You're four games into an 18-game conference schedule. There's a lot that can happen between now and when we get to Las Vegas, let's say. I think, I think the most important part of this that – is is hard to see, you know, in because of you know you, every game is is so important, and there's a result from every game. But you need to get, be getting better as a group, and you need to be able to become uh, more consistent in executing down the stretch, more more on both ends of the floor. And you can see that in film, and you show that to your guys. And if you get them to stay together and believe in yourself, in themselves, and as a group. I think uh, by the end you have something that's really special. Has it been a fr good first couple of days of practice as you get into this weekend? Here? Yeah, they, uh, this is a great group. I, I mean, I love coaching this team, and uh, I feel for them when you know we, we we were so close, you know, to being four and zero. I mean, that's obviously what they want to be, and uh, and and we were, we're just a possession or two away from that. And I, I just. The most important thing for me is so that they stay connected, that we stay together and we don't lose hope and, and get discouraged and start kind of splitting off on our own direction. And, and when I, I think the, the, the team's in a really good spot. But 
you got you to just keep winning games. We hope we get one of those uh, two for two weekends this weekend, yeah, right? I hope so. That's what we're looking for. All right, Coach. Well, good luck this weekend. All right, thanks a lot. All right, we'll do this again next Tuesday. Love to see you here in Studio C for next week's show. To request seats, go to byucougars.com slash show. Do it next Monday or Tuesday to get a spot in next Tuesday night's audience. Again, 8 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Mountain right here in Studio C. So we'll talk to you next Tuesday at 8 Eastern, 6 Mountain. For Elijah Bryant and head coach Dave Rose, my name is Greg Rubel. Thank you to our fans here in Studio C. This has been BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. We'll talk to you again next week. Have a great week and go Cougars! She's honest and loving and caring and warm and happy and, you know, you never really see her have a bad day, so. Win or lose Michael and I are unbreakable. <laughs> My name is Eric Dowdle. As an artist, I've been lucky enough to travel all over the world and meet some of the greatest and most interesting people. Spending time with the locals and learning their history allows me to discover the heart of each city. Each place has a unique story to tell and I get to